We're worried, right, about something. We're anxious about something. We're upset about something. We're angry about something. We're hurt about something. So we give God our hurt, and God gives us His healing. Well, thank you so much for being with us, and uh, thank you for joining us today. And I am teaching through a book that I wrote called Frequency, Tune In, Hear God. God is speaking. Are we listening? And 35 years now I've been in ministry, and the number one question that I get asked is by far people ask me, how do I hear God? How can I hear God? And how can I know that it's God speaking to me? So in this series, we've been talking about how to hear God. In the book, I talk about how to hear God, the different ways that God speaks, practical ways. We're going to get into some very practical ways to hear God. But today I want to talk to you about hear God's voice through worship. Now I want you to think about how many times you've been in a worship service and you've sensed the presence of God and God has spoken something to you that you needed to hear. I mean, just changed your life. God speaks through worship. The reason God speaks through worship is because He's there. He's there where two or three are gathered in my name. There I am. I'm right there in the midst. I can remember one time that uh, this young lady got saved and she went home. She was living with a guy. He was in a rock band. She went home and said, I'm moving out. And the guy said, why are you moving out? She said, I got saved. He said, well, I want to get saved too. Literally. And he, she said, well, I'm, I'm serious. And he said, I'm serious too. She said, I gave my life to Jesus. He said, I want to give my life to Jesus. So she told him the only way she knew how to get saved, which was the way that she'd gotten saved. So she said, okay, next Sunday, you come to church with me. And when the pastor says, if you're a visitor and you want to give your life to Jesus, you come down the front. She said, then you go down to the front. So he said, okay. So the next week they came to church and during the worship, he said he started thinking to himself, I'm getting sick. I'm getting sick. I'm, I'm, and he started thinking, I'm going to throw up. I'm going to throw up right down the back of this lady in front of me. That's what he was thinking. And so he said to his girlfriend, I got to go because I'm about to throw up. And she said, it's just the devil. Just stop it like that. <laughs> so he said, all of a sudden he felt better. But he was sensing God's presence in worship. You know, he was sensing something different. So I want to talk to you about worship. Let me read you a couple of scriptures about the tabernacle in the Old Testament, all right? Um, Exodus chapter 25, uh, verses 1 and 2. Exodus 25, verse 1 says, Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel that they bring me an offering. From everyone who gives it willingly with his heart, you shall take that offering. Offering. Now, here's what he's saying. When they come to church, I want them to come to give. Now, a lot of times we don't even think about this. I, I'm not talking about money at all. Don't even think about that for a moment. But God is saying when they come to the tabernacle, I want them to bring a willing offering. Now, I'm going to tell you why that's so important in just a moment, okay? Then he goes down in verse 8 and says, And let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. Dwell would be another word for live. And then verse 22, he says, and there I will meet with you and I will speak with you. Now we're talking about hearing God, God speaking. I've told you, God speaks all through the Bible, all through the Bible. The Bible starts with God speaking to Adam and Eve. It ends with God speaking to John on the island of Patmos, God speaking. So God wants to speak with us, but he also wants to meet with us. This tabernacle is actually called the tabernacle of meeting. So let me just take these two phrases. He says, there, I'm going to meet with you and I'm going to speak with you. Okay. So here's point number one. I will meet with you. I will meet with you. God wants to meet with you. Now, when the Lord started speaking this to me, I, I just thought that this is what I want to share on. I want to share it with the whole church. And then eventually I put it in the book. But I remember thinking, I've got two great points. I will meet with you and I will speak with you. And then when I wrote down, I will meet with you, I thought, what's the difference? I will meet with you and I will speak with you. What's the difference? And the Lord started showing me.
God can speak to you without meeting with you. All through Scripture, He might send a prophet to give you a word from God, but God's not there. He's not there meeting with you. Um, there was one time when a hand showed up and started writing on the wall. You remember that? God was speaking, but He wasn't there. So there are ways, and even now, you can, uh, someone can speak with you and not meet with you. You can send someone a letter, you know, if you're old fashioned, <laughs> or you can send them an email, or you can send them a text, right? Or you can call and talk to them on the phone, and you can speak with them, but there's no meeting. So there's a difference. So I think this is very important. Where God's talking about worship, He says, I do want to speak to you. And we're all, this is, this is a, a, we're talking about a book that I wrote, Frequency, about hearing God. I'm telling you, yes, God wants to speak to you. But here's a great truth that we miss. He wants to meet with you too. You say, well, what's the difference? Okay. Well, you can hug someone when you meet with them. Uh, I, I, we referenced earlier that one of my good friends, Gavin McLeod, is here. He used to be an actor and played captain of the love boat and things like that. Well, we talked on the phone Saturday before he came. Today, the first thing when I saw him, we hugged. We spoke Saturday, but today we met. We met together. You see what I'm saying? There's a difference. Okay, so God wants to meet with you. And then he makes this statement. Now, when they come, have them bring an offering. And why is God saying that? Let me tell you why. Because when you give to God, it's in his nature that he gives back to you. Now, we all, I know we always relate this to money, but I want you to know that it's more than that. When you give something to God, God gives something back to you. Now, please understand this. We really don't have anything to give God. As a matter of fact, what we actually have to give him most of the time isn't that good. We're worried, right, about something. We're anxious about something. We're upset about something. We're angry about something. We're hurt about something. So we give God our hurt. God gives us his healing. We give God our worry. He gives us his peace. See, the difference with a meeting and not just speaking with is that there can be an exchange. Uh, let me show you a, a scripture. Uh, Genesis 28, verses 16 and 17. It says, Then Jacob awoke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. And he was afraid and said, how awesome is this place. This is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. Okay, well, um, I, I've told you before, I'm, I'm a grammarian. I love grammar, uh, and I love math. I love those two subjects. So this jumps out at me. Now, maybe none of you it jumped out at. I understand that. You might have strengths. You, you do have strengths in other areas. Uh, but if you're a grammarian, that jumps out. Because Jacob said, surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. Okay, let me say it again. He said, surely the Lord, I see one shaking her head, so you, under, you got it. Surely the Lord is in this place. That's present tense. And I did not know it. That's past tense. Okay, that's a no-no. You don't do that. I have to tell my wife and my sons and my daughters all the time when they say, Dad, will you read over this article I wrote? Okay, no. And my wife sometimes will say, will you read this that I wrote and don't correct the grammar? Because <laughs> we'll run it through the editorial department. They'll correct the grammar. I just want to know the content and I want to know if the theology is right. And what do you think about the content? And I say to her, Sugar, I... I I have to correct the grammar because I, I can't read it until I correct the grammar, okay? <laughs> All right. So I see this and I think, okay, that's grammatically incorrect. Okay, here's the only problem with that. That's the Bible. <laughs> so you can't say something's wrong with the Bible. Something's wrong with me. So what I realized is that here's what Jacob was saying. Surely the Lord is, present tense, still in this place. And I did not know it, but I know it now. I know it now. 
but I didn't know it, but I know it now. Okay, let me give you a definition of worship. Worship is becoming aware of the presence of God. That's what worship is. Worship is an encounter with God. And if you were going to read the story, what Jacob does is he says, God, I'm going to serve you. He first, before this, he calls him the God of my father. After this encounter, he calls him my God. In other words, before this, he says, you're the God of my parents. And he meets with God. And he says, you know, the Lord is here. And I didn't know it, but I know it now. At TBN, our mission is to use every available means to reach as many individuals and families as possible with the life-changing gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you for helping make the gospel of grace go around the world. Without you, we couldn't do it. God bless you.